How many of you out there in my audience remember way back in March when it was all over the mainstream media about the collapse of the government in Haiti and how the country had been overrun by gangs and that there was complete civil collapse, total disorder, mayhem, chaos, and we needed to get Americans out and we for sure needed to find a way to restore law and order. Then all of a sudden, as soon as it showed up, the story left the news cycle, and we didn't hear another thing about it. There's a reason for that, and I'm going to share it in today's video because it's tied to a couple of other major stories that we have covered here on this channel. Years ago, we said this was coming, and now it's here. A lot of people have forgotten. Many things have happened, but the mainstream media is distracting you from the real story. Now, if you've been with the channel for any amount of time, a couple years ago, I started talking about this very curious series that was out on Stars called Black Sails. It's basically a pirate story about the Caribbean back in the 18th century and how what they were doing in the series very much mimicked what the cryptocurrency guys are trying to do now. Basically, they had stolen a bunch of Spanish gold and they needed to find a way to transact with it without actually using it. So they converted it into black pearls and emeralds and rubies and all sorts of other things that were easily hidden and couldn't be directly connected to the gold. That's basically the idea of cryptocurrency. Many have said, and I agreed with them, that cryptocurrency in general is only good for criminal enterprises, mainly speaking, and this is the most important part here in this video, the trade in weapons, the trade in drugs and alcohol, and the trade in, well, prostitution, basically. That's what it's good for, hiding transactions. Now, remember that term, hiding transactions. This is battlefield of the mind stuff. Nobody is seeing this, but when I walk through this, people are going to go, how in the hell did we miss it? And why are none of the big channels talking about this? It's so easy to see when you point it out. Now, real quick, as always, Battlefield of the Mind training. Florida Maquis Patreon channel. One single U.S. dollar per month. That's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, first 90 days. No questions asked. If you want the training, hundreds of videos for that dollar. And not for you in three months, you can get your dollar back. Doesn't happen that way with cryptocurrency, though, does it? Now, I give this story about these Americans detained in the Turks and Caicos, four full bull poops. All of these people, oh, they're just so innocent. Oh my gosh, I just, those of you who don't know the story, they've been detained, this island directly north of Haiti, by the way, for having, oh my gosh, I just forgot I had these two rounds, these two cartridges in my pocket, in my luggage, in my carry-on. Oopsie-daisy. How did that get there? Now, if you believe that story, that actually proves my point about irresponsible Americans and what will happen in this country if there's ever a power-down, grid-down situation. There are so many irresponsible gun owners out there that when they release the prisoners because of humanitarian reasons, and they will, they're going to go find a whole bunch of unsecured weapons and ammunition everywhere. Proof here, if you believe these people. Now, I don't believe them for one minute. I don't believe him for one minute. I believe these people got caught with the remnants of smuggling, small batch smuggling into the Turks and Caicos to get, that, get those rounds into Haiti. Now, why do I believe that? Well, we're going to definitely get into that. But real quick, the Florida Maquis channel on YouTube, if you go to videos and go to popular, five of the top seven videos that people watch one with over a million views, deals with this idea in a power-down, grid-down situation where the government is starting to lose control. One of the first things they will do is they will open up the prisons. They will open up the prisons for humanitarian reasons because they won't be able to feed them. They won't be able to provide air conditioning. Just look at what's going on in the Southwest right now. They won't get water, health care, nothing. They'll release them. And when they're released, they are going to go on a tear. These criminals are going to go on a tear and they're going to look 
first of all, four weapons. That's what they're going to do. Places to, to hole up. They've been locked in the cells for years and years and years. Many of them only know how to operate as gangs. And real serious offenders. People with 34 felonies who actually do have 34 felonies for real good reasons. But, of course, everybody's going to have learned to ignore that. See, once they get free, they're going to find a whole bunch of lazy Americans who think, ah, oh, it's fine, I got it all locked up. Yeah, I got, oh yeah, I think my, my keys to the gun safe are on the counter or hanging by the back door, but it's all locked up. You see, what's going to happen is they're either going to stumble onto people like this in a grinned out situation, or another allegation I've made that people really don't like is a lot of these guys are going to get out and they're going to start to prey on lonely housewives. And given the state of the American male right now, I don't know what the percentage is now, 60, 70%, they're ob obese and impotent. They're not going to say no. They're not going to be able to say no. And that's going to be their in. Now, you're going to take a bunch of random guys and you're going to turn them into fully armed cartels because of the stockpiling and the hoarding of weapons across this country. Now, what does this have to do with anything? American dad held in Turks and Caicos for having ammo in his luggage. Blast State Department. See, they knew. They knew. What did they know? That in, and let me bring it up here real quick. Here's Haiti. Here's the Dominican Republic. Ready for this? Here is the Turks and Caicos. In a place like Haiti right now, rounds and weapons go for 20 to 30 times, sometimes even higher, what they go for in the States. Meaning it's probably not an overstatement to say you could get anywhere from $200 to $500. Ready for this? Per round. Not per weapon. Per round. Because, as one guy on uh, Reddit points out, I'm going to read this, he says it exactly right. He says it exactly right about why four bullets are a big deal. <coughs> and he says bullets, what he really means is cartridges or rounds. I thought I would give a bit of perspective on why having a few bullets is a big deal. This guy is speaking from the Turks and the Caicos. First and foremost, there's no Second Amendment there. And as long as you were in the Turks and Caicos, you don't have Second Amendment rights. Guns are heavily restricted there, and they take them seriously because they have huge gang problems. They do not share America's views on them and do not think that just anybody should be able to get them. So misplacing and forgetting that you just had some cartridges and rounds laying around looks very irresponsible and negligent to us. See, I get a lot of pushback on the videos saying that, oh, most gun owners are very responsible to have everything locked up. This proves this isn't the case because what, what's going on? These people are making the allegation, these people are making the allegation that, oh, oopsie daisy, I didn't realize, I didn't realize I had live rounds in my baggage before I traveled. Now, what does this have to do with Bitcoin? How do you think they were being paid? You see, it's real simple. You take 100 rounds down there and you get paid... $500 per round. Do the math on how much money that is. The one big score mentality. The one big score mentality. And that's what's going to happen if things fall apart here. All these guys are going to have to do is find that one house with that one lonely housewife, that one house where the guy's asleep and his keys are hanging up in the kitchen somewhere on some Sunday. And that's what's going to happen. These guys are going to turn into huge cartels. Regular, normal, everyday prisoners who have been locked up 15, 20 years. No other way to operate. They're going to get thousands of rounds and dozens of weapons from these guys who have absolutely no concept of what real security is of what real security is all about. And that's a lot of Americans. But let me continue on this. 
We are in between waves, because there's a really great point this guy makes here. We are in between waves of increasing gun violence and murders right now. As more and more guns and ammo make their way onto the island, the worst and fastest those waves are hitting. We are tired of losing friends and family. The vast majority of the guns in the Turks and Caicos are there originally from America. It's incredibly frustrating to see America's inability to deal with their gun issue directly feeding their problems. Guns, ammo, and parts all get used for the same thing. Ammo is half the equation and hard to get there and virtually impossible to manufacture. So we treat them the same. If you get caught leaving with contraband, here you go. Listen to this part. If you listen to anything in this video, listen to this part. If you get caught leaving with contraband, how do we know that's all you had? And you didn't have more that was given or sold to someone. Smuggling in small batches is a thing. You see, this is this is the 100% agree. Ammunition is more than half the equation. See, you can 3D manufacture a cheap gun. But the ammunition part of the equation is incredibly, incredibly difficult down there. And that all of a sudden, after everything falls apart in Haiti, we see a bunch of Americans all of a sudden showing up in the Turks and Caicos with oopsie-daisy ammunition with, oh my gosh, I just totally forgot. I just can't believe, I just, you know, man, I, I have, I guess I just have cartridges and rounds laying around. There was another guy in this, uh, in this thread on Reddit who talks about, oh, well, I was at a, a shooting range once and I was, I had 22 uh, rounds and I had them in my front pockets and they're very deep pockets and I guess a couple snuck down there. This guy makes the allegation that he went to the airport having put on a pair of pants that had rounds in it and he had no idea that it had rounds in it. And this guy, you know, talks about um, forming the available materials for cartridges requiring incredibly specific tools, primer seats, extractor grooves, bullet presses, all this kind of stuff is incredibly difficult to do. So this is my story. You have one of two things that you can believe here. One of two things. If you believe their story, that they are that ridiculously absent-minded that they would travel out of the country without, not, not weapons, no, mind you, none of them, none of them were detained for having a weapon. All of these guys were caught on their way back to the States from the Turks and Caicos with just random cartridges and rounds. All of them. Making the allegation they had no idea they had it with them. Meaning they went through all their luggage while they were on vacation and didn't notice the rounds. <clears throat> if you believe that, if you believe that, then that proves my point. That proves my point about what's going to happen in this country. That there are so many irresponsible gun owners out there that when these prisoners get released, it's just going to be like picking them off, you know, the gun tree. To find the right houses, to find the right people with the gun safes, who don't give a rat's ass, that just leave stuff laying around everywhere. Or if you don't believe them, if you don't believe them, then you have even a bigger problem. If you don't believe them, then guess what's happening? All these so-called good and righteous gun owners are using cryptocurrency to illegally smuggle weapons into a country that doesn't want them. Think about that for just a minute. Remember, all gun owners are good and righteous and decent and upstanding people. Every single one of them. How dare anyone make the allegation of this, 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 that, or the other? I mean, look how clean-shaven they are and how decent they are. You see, what the one of the two stories has to be true. Either they didn't know and they're the most brain-dead, irresponsible people on the planet, and that would be a good reason to take away their guns, or they are engaging in international smuggling because 
the rounds are going for exorbitant prices in the Caribbean, and they're basically pretending to be pirates and smugglers looking for that one big score. That one big score, go down there with 100 rounds, charge 500 bucks a piece, maybe more, 50 grand, one quick trip, used to be just a fine. But now they got detained. And the State Department knows what's what the real story is. And now these guys are, are playing the victim. This guy, this guy went down for his 40th birthday party, right? Left his kids behind. Left his kids behind. Went to the Caribbean to celebrate his 40th birthday, but didn't want his kids around him. Does that make sense to any of them? Watson arrested on April 11 after a dream 40th birthday vacation with friends. What 40-year-old do you know that doesn't want to have birthday around their kids? Uh Uh-huh. You see, something stinks. Something stinks to high heaven. And I'm telling you right now, it's got, where's the picture? Cryptocurrency written all over it. Mark my words. They're trying to recoup. They're trying to get that one big score. That or they honestly don't deserve that. If they're that stupid, if they're that stupid and irresponsible, they shouldn't have a weapon. If they're not that stupid and irresponsible, and they knew those rounds were there, they knew those rounds were there for a reason. And it is not a coincidence right now that in Haiti, those weapons and those rounds are going for exorbitant prices. And this is just, I think it's hilarious that this is only a hop, skip, and a jump from where, you ready for this? Where black sails was set. It was set in Nassau. It was set in the Bahamas, and that's exactly what they used it for. The entire show takes place in a brothel, basically. And they use the brothel to traffic in all sorts of stolen goods. The basic premise of the story is there's a woman there who is who runs a, a fencing operation out of a Hotel, brothel, uh, meeting place, pawn shop, whatever. And that's literally what's going on. That is literally what is going on right now in the Turks and Caicos. Just north of Haiti. And there are Americans right now that are crying victim. Crying victim who ain't victims. So... I know the whole lonely housewife thing is is kind of a controversial take for how prisoners would weasel their way in to somebody's gun safe, but mark my words, ask a cop. Ask a cop about couples that are on the outs. Couples that are, you know, in the early stages of separating her, possibly divorce, and she knows how much the weapons are worth. And she knows how much the weapons are worth. And she might have a vendetta. And then she's all of a sudden got this new, hunky, ripped, strong, skinny friend who's telling her everything she wants to hear. It is a very, very common thing. Unfortunately. So, I will just leave that there and let you guys put all these pieces together for yourself. It's a battlefield of mine, guys. You gotta take notes. And you gotta pay attention to everything that's going on. Love to have you at Patreon. Make a huge difference in my life. And like I said, if something happens where you show up paying your dollar and then all of a sudden finances creep in or there's a problem, you can cancel any time. After the 90 days, you can still cancel. But the first 90 days, you get your money back. So nothing lost. So God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.